could there be a surprise contender for the Premier League title this season? Um, I think we've seen weaknesses in all of the top sides, actually. Maybe not so much Liverpool. You know, they get the business done, even yeah. if not playing brilliantly. But Manchester City conceding a lot of goals and Arsenal picking up a lot of red cards. So what about Aston Villa? They came from behind early on to beat Fulham 3-1 at the Cottage. Five wins, two draws, just the one defeat for Villa so far this season. That was home to Arsenal. Well, let's be honest, they were pretty unfortunate. <coughs> so Unai Emery was asked afterwards if they now believe they are one of the best sides in the league. This is our idea. Uh, this is our dream. Of course, last year we, we got uh, the dreams we had to get uh, Europe, to get Champions League. And this year uh, we can feel with the experiences we had last year trying to help us to, to keep the same performances and to get again to be in Europe and hopefully in Champions League but we know it's going to be very difficult and uh, this is the reason I am very happy today because to win here is very difficult and, uh, and, and, and for us it's very important uh, Best start in 26 years four points off the top home to Bournemouth next in the Premier League that is no gimme by the way no that's true uh, no gimme <coughs> at all um, and then a couple of big away games at Tottenham and, and Liverpool. Are, are they contenders? I mean, the manager's well, driven, isn't he? That's for sure. 100%. Yeah. And, and the change that he's made in the club since he's gone there, you would have to be described as dramatic as, as well as excellent. I mean, the Villa fans must be pinching themselves and get up in the morning just where they are, what they're achieving, where the club are. Brilliant. And that's a team... Obviously, I thought Watkins great header again at the weekend. He, it was a I, fabulous yeah, header. Fabulous header. <clears throat> Got a lot of power in it. But they just they just look really, really comfortable, you know. And, and that's them. Um, I'm looking at their side. You know, they they've still got the kind of dilemma, if you like, about John Duran. I know he came on again at the weekend. McGinn in the bench. Barkley in the bench. Been there. They look as though they've got a little bit of strength now, which they need, Jeff. Obviously, with the, with the European games coming up, can they be? You know, called title contenders at this moment in time, they've got to be as simple as that. They've got to be, but they're still, as we know, long, long way to go. But the level of performance and where they are in the league, yes, yeah. <clears throat> uh, whether they can stay the course is another matter. Yeah. But look, enjoy the ride. Uh, Brighton are as well. Danny Welbeck, ha, what a season he is. You can, uh, brilliant. brilliant. I mean, I, I got to say it, and I did. I think I mentioned it you know, a couple of weeks ago. What a lovely lad. What an yeah, excellent what an absolute diamond of a lad. Interviewed him down at uh, down at Brighton before I think it was maybe the Manchester United game. And he, he, he just you know, really endearing, really pleasant, warm, delighted to see him doing well and aren't his team doing well. Yeah. I've got to say on the flip side of it, I'll never know how Newcastle didn't score at the weekend. Had so many chances. I will never know how they didn't score at the weekend. That said, brilliant result, Brighton. Yeah, um, and we <coughs> might touch on Newcastle a bit later on because Craig Hope in the mail is saying the first eleven now is weaker than it was two years ago. Well, if that's true, then you do have to wonder what the heck has gone wrong with the sort of investment potentially yeah. that they have. Um, Ali, Rob has texted and said, how long are we going to delay talking <coughs> about Rangers? So let's do it now, shall we? Um, <laughs> Thanks Lost that, at Rob. Kilmarnock. I mean, there are six points behind <coughs> Celtic and Aberdeen. I think there were all sorts of protests against the mismanagement of the club. Yeah, that, it, from the fans I saw it. Um, Jeff, no getting away from it. The performance was very, very, very poor. I looked at the game... <clears throat> And I'm, I'm watching the game closely. It was, it was a good game at Celtic Park at the weekend. Obviously, Aberdeen coming back from two 0 down. But you've asked me about the Rangers game. Massive problems. The, the, the re really concerning thing for me, I think Derek McInnes, just for the for the record, has probably been the best Scottish manager domestically in the last ten, fifteen mm -hmm. years. I really do. I think he's been absolutely outstanding, and, and, and he's doing another good job at Kilmarnock. Took a little bit while to get them going this year, but they're well on their way. They were organised. And they looked as though they knew exactly what they were doing. They knew their jobs. And they, particularly at home, they are a, a proposition. That said, I thought Rangers were really poor, Jeff. I mean, nothing in forward areas. Defensively, they look as though, you know, very, I wouldn't say incapable of keeping a clean sheet, but, you know, you, you worry every time about a cross ball. I mean, I'm sitting watching the game yesterday with a wee man. You worry every time a cross ball comes into the box. Still not get things sorted off the park. You know, John Gilligan's, John Gilligan's went in there who's a, a very, very good man and obviously will steady his ship and try and get people in as soon as he can. 
and it's so important we got like, somebody in there to run the place whether it's a chairman chief executive mm. it just the club just looks all over the place at this moment in time sadly Jeff um, Aberdeen came from two down to get a point against Celtic mm. and a lot of Aberdeen fans think they were robbed at the end when a, well, a winning goal was ruled out can I talk to you about that yeah right and here's my take on it the law says she can't argue with the law the, the decision to disallow it is, is the correct one now forget the two teams taking part because people say I'm anti Celtic. I'm not right this is the gospel truth that man I think it's Duke's arm that comes off he's got abs- he's facing the other way right so he has absolutely mm. no idea about that ball hitting him so it goes down as unintentional and for that I think that goal should probably stand I, I really really do if it hits any other part of his anatomy and goes in it's a goal he's facing the other way he doesn't know about it and I think that goal should stand in general play it's not an anti-Celtic thing because Celtic will win the league this year I don't think there's any doubt about that and they're the best team in the, in the league but that is a talking point because you and I will talk and we do we talk every yep. week about handballs intentional handballs they've got to bring the word intentional back into the law I think I agree completely agree it would clear up a lot of things yeah. a lot of things look a couple of very quick texts this is probably uh, slanderous but uh, morning Jeff Ali nice to say hello to Ali and the M&S at London Bridge last night nothing more than a nod to each other but still uh, I noticed Ali was waiting for the yellow reduction stickers to be put on the sandwiches <laughs> <laughs> very good and Mick in Southport says <laughs> Mick in Southport says uh, Maury, what's happened to Jim and all these West Ham fans that used to text you every day with Moyes out? You all asked for this. They're conspicuously quiet these days. Jim, Jim. You reap what you sow, guys. You reap what you sow. That's a fair point. Where is Jim? I don't know. Jim, where are Jim, you? Jim, where are you, mate? Where are you? Come where on, are Jim. you? Come on, Jim. Talk Sport Breakfast. Waking you up Monday to Friday morning from 6 a.m. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.